If you are a road warrior, a frequent business traveler, or a salesperson who spends a lot of time traveling and outside the office, or you are just a fan of portable gadgets, then at some point you must have thought of that one laptop that will meet your need for portability without compromising on your needed features and performance. Having as much features as possible, closely and neatly squeezed into the smallest possible space. Join me as I walk you through the very impressive features of this HP Ultra Portable Notebook and why I think this is one of the most powerful feature-packed Ultra Portables in the business. Okay, I just have to say here that this is not some kind of paid advertising. I stumbled upon this notebook some months ago and it's been so exciting exploring the features, so I felt like sharing with you guys. Of course, HP is no stranger to small and powerful notebooks. The company pioneered the ultra portable market with its 2.9 pound Omni book back in the early 90s. Since then, its focus has been on more traditional consumer and business systems. The EliteBook series, for instance, are widely known for their excellent features and innovative design using high quality durable materials. This enables them to stand the harshest usage environments. But how about the smallest member of the squad? The HP EliteBook 2540P balances lightweight and a compact design with full-sized features while maintaining the durable build quality the series are known for. First, let's talk about the size of this notebook. The 2540P measures 11.1 by 8.4 inches at 1.1 inch thickness, weighing about 1.7 kilos or 3.8 pounds with a 6-cell battery and a little more with a 9-cell battery option. It offers a 12.1 inch WXGA anti glare screen at 1280 by 800 pixel resolution. And speaking of the screen size, the 12 inch screen is considered to be the cutoff point for business ultra portables. Below that point, you'll be venturing into the netbook territory. So, as far as screen size goes, this is the smallest screen you would find on a business notebook. But that's not the biggest selling point of this machine. Let's talk about the build quality. The 2540P, like other Elite books, is fortified with hard plastic and strong magnesium alloy on the inner shell. This is conventionally called the HP Jura case. The combination is further strengthened with brushed aluminium outer shell to give you extra durability. This finishing is called the HP Jura finish and is basically scratch resistant. The overall build of the Elite book forms a boxy looking frame that feels very substantial. The screen offers a 180 degree positioning and on top of the panel is a metal catch which offers an excellent locking mechanism for the screen. Speaking of durability, if you look closely at this particular one, you will notice a little dent underneath the HP logo here on the back cover. I'll zoom in a bit to make it more visible. I don't remember exactly how this happened but I can tell you that a similar incident on most conventional laptops would at least cause a crack on the back cover and in the worst case scenario affect the display. HP claims that this Elite Book was designed to meet the military standard 810F for reliability and performance under extreme conditions. No wonder it shipped with a 3 years warranty. Let's take a look at the connection ports. Now this is one of the most surprising features of this little guy, the ports. Usually notebooks of this size range have to make a lot of sacrifices when it comes to connection ports. It's like the price they pay for their portability. But this Elite Book provides just about all necessary connection interfaces without overclustering. On the right side, you have the Express Card slot, and right underneath it is the standard SD card reader. Then you have the Firewire, the Headphone Jack, VGA, Display Port, Docking Port, and a Lock slot. On the rear side, you have the RJ45 Ethernet Jack to the left and two USB 2.0 ports to the right. On the left side, you have the standard 7.4x5mm DC power jack a modem jack, one USB 2.0 port making three USB ports in all, and yes, an optical drive. I mean, while other notebooks of this form factor are looking for space to fit an additional USB port, this guy had enough space to house an entire optical drive, which is kind of ridiculous. And no, they didn't stop there. If you look closely above the optical drive, you will see another compartment. It looks like a little slit about two inches in length. That is a smart card reader. This is mostly used in corporate organizations like banks and hospitals to prevent unauthorized access. So for doctors to access personal information about a client, in addition to username and password, they would need to enter their ID smart card into this card reader first. That shouldn't come as a surprise for a typical business notebook, but with this form size, I wouldn't have held them up to it if it wasn't included. Now I guess you are wondering, why won't HP just replace this with a SIM card slot? After all, more people are likely to use a SIM card module than smart cards. Well, 
You are right, which is why underneath this battery compartment, you find a standard SIM card slot to go with a 3G modem that you can attach right underneath this cover. Speaking about the wireless connection possibilities, in addition to the 3G mobile broadband, it also provides standard Bluetooth 2.1, 802.11bgn Wi-Fi and an onboard GPS integrated to the 3G mobile broadband card. The keyboard is very well laid out for this form factor. Of course, you don't get as much spacing between keys like you would have on other bigger notebooks, but they are quite comfortable to use. The keys are generally flat and rubberized, they press down swiftly without loud clicking sounds, hence giving you a crisp, tactile feedback. Above the screen next to the webcam is an illumination button which provides lighting for the keyboard similar to what you find on other big elite books, so you can continue your work in the dark without having to bend over your screen to light up your keyboard. Above the keyboard are some touch sensitive icons for volume adjustment, wireless connections and few other functions. Pointing devices include both a touchpad and a point stick, each with a separate pair of keys for right and left clicking. This duality is meant to serve the preferences of different professionals so that everyone could use what they find more convenient. Beneath the keyboard to the right is a fingerprint reader. I, I don't normally rely so much on this with most laptops but this one seems quite responsive and fast too. This notebook also has an ambient light sensor located on the frame below the screen. This sensor is able to detect the brightness of the room and automatically adjust the brightness of the screen. This not only allows you to conserve some energy, but also saves your eyes from strain and enables you to work longer hours. Let's talk about the battery. The 2540p comes with three possible battery options, a 3-cell, a 6-cell and a 9-cell battery. The 3-cell option latches completely with the chassis so you don't have to worry about the protrusion from the back. It offers an average runtime of 3 to 4 hours depending on the applications you have running. The 6-cell option offers 7 to 8 hours while the 9-cell offers anywhere above 10 hours. Of course, the 6 and 9-cell options are protruded batteries, but I actually prefer the 9-cell battery option for several reasons. First is the obvious fact that it offers an extended usage time during travels. Second is that little elevation from the protruded cells. You will appreciate this more if you are working on a flat table. It kind of gives you some typing leverage similar to what you get from a docking station. This also gives your cooling grills more space for air circulation. The protruded region also makes the overall handling of the notebook a little more convenient. Being an ultra portable notebook, you may not always have the convenience of a working table. So at times you might have to hold it on one hand or operate with the other hand. So holding it by the protruded part gives you some good grip in such circumstances. I know this poses some additional weight, but the difference in weight with a 6L battery is just about 150 grams, which is less than the weight of this empty glass. Behind the battery are four tiny LED lights, each representing a quarter of the battery state of charge. A long press on the battery icon will indicate the status of the battery using these LEDs. So right now the battery is anywhere between 50 and 75% charge. This feature doesn't come with most replacement batteries like this one. And now let's talk about the technical specifications. The 2540p rocks a 2.1 GHz Intel Core i7 dual core processor with 4 MB cache memory. It turbos at 2.93 GHz and provides support for hyper threading. Integrated to the processor is an Intel GMA HD graphics card with a base frequency of 266 MHz and a maximum dynamic frequency of 566 MHz. This would provide support for HD video technologies as well as flexible display interfaces. This is the low voltage processor spec. For the standard voltage processor configuration, you will have to trade off the optical drive to provide additional spacing for cooling. You will also have a standard 2.5 inch hard drive, one additional USB port, and of course with that you will get full ultimate performance. For the operating system, this particular one came pre-installed with Windows 7 Professional 64-bit. However, I was confident to upgrade to Windows 10 without fear of degrading the performance. It came with a 4GB DDR3 SD RAM. It has two RAM slots, one on either side of the motherboard. So opening the back cover gives you access to only one of the RAM slots. For better performance, I decided to upgrade to a 6GB RAM by replacing the easily accessible 2GB with a 4GB. The hard drive in this spec is a 1.8-inch SATA 2 250GB at 5400 RPM. 
this is a very light and portable storage option. Now there is no question that this Elite Book offers an amazing build quality with excellent system performance which exceeds that of most of its competitors. Added to the massive range of ports and functionalities, one could hardly ask for anything else. But if anything, maybe replacing one of the USB ports with a HDMI port. Of course, there is the possibility of using the USB to HDMI converter like this one, but that way it will be a lot more convenient. The second and more important thing would be to add a dedicated graphics card to this notebook. Of course, the Intel HD graphics is able to support demanding graphic applications like Photoshop, OBS and even Premiere Pro. But a dedicated graphics card would be a game changer for this little guy. Here I tried some editing using the latest version of Photoshop and it was just as fast and responsive as you would find with most standard laptops. I even combined it with screen recording using OBS and it was fairly smooth at 30 frames per second. So running Minecraft didn't require any special configurations, it played out decently without any lags. However, when it comes to 3D experience, then the need for a dedicated graphics card become more eminent. Of course, one could argue that not a lot of business users would be doing graphics design or encoding HD videos on the go, but it seems like the vision is to have it all in one box, so why not? Further improvements for someone who doesn't need an optical drive could be to replace it with either a secondary hard drive to expand your storage capacity or an SSD to improve speed. Of course, that is if you choose to run your main operating system from the SSD. That way you will be boosting the performance of this already powerful notebook even further. And just a quick note about price. As at the time of release, the 2540p was valued between $1100 and a little over $1600, depending on the configurations you choose. Right now, you could get a fairly used one like this one in very good working condition for as low as $500 or even less. Let me know what you think about this notebook in the comment section below and if you have some experience using this notebook, please share with us in the comments and I will join the discussion. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share with anyone you think might want to see. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button for notification on more tech related videos. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.